Secretary of Transportation Pete Buttigieg is doing what a lot of other Dems and a lot of the legacy media are doing as well, blaming President Trump for what happened in Ohio. They are citing rail braking regulation that went into effect back in 2018. But I don't want people pointing to process as a way to get away from the fundamental questions of rail safety regulation and accountability and whether we're going to make it tougher or we're, whether we're going to allow it to continue being watered down. Pete Buttigieg even was on Joy Reid's show last night talking about Donald Trump and that regulation. But here's the thing. Like so many stories about Donald Trump, this is fake news. But the facts never get in the way of some people's mouths, and that includes Joy Behar's. I don't know why they would ever vote for him, because for somebody who, who, by the way, he placed someone with deep ties to the chemical industry in charge of the EPA's chemical safety office. That's who you voted for in that district. Donald Trump, who reduces all safety. He yeah. did. You could hear the crowd even kind of booed there. She continued to say it's his fault, and then he shows up. But here are the facts, and this is according to the chair of the NTSB, Jennifer Hominy. She says the train didn't nor wouldn't have the brakes that were being deregulated here and that the braking rule would have applied only to high hazard flammable trains. And this train didn't fall in that category because it only had three of the specific cars. That's not enough to get this type of classification. Now, the regulation on the brakes that everyone's talking about, that was actually rolled back due to the FAST Act, which was passed in 2015. And you know who was president then? President Obama. Joining us now to talk more about this is Kimberly Guilfoyle, National Finance Chairwoman of MAGA again. Great to see you, Kim. Great to see you. All right, so for a case in point on this and how dishonest the coverage has been, we need to look no further than PolitiFact. Here's the claim, which came from a leftist Twitter account called Occupy Democrats. Obama imposed stricter rules on trains carrying toxins. Trump killed them. Now, PolitiFact rated this as mostly true. But then a couple paragraphs down, they admit the truth in fine print. Even if the safety rule had still been in effect, it would not have applied to the Norfolk Southern train that derailed in East Palestine, East Palestine, Ohio, because it was not categorized as such. I know there's a lot of details here, Kim, but I feel like we have to point this out because the left, Pete Buttigieg, and so many people continue to repeat these lies. Well, they do. They're very dishonest, and the media is very dishonest. They're essentially like the PR marketing team working overtime for Biden, his administration, the EPA, Buttigieg. And this is just all to distract from a pivotal moment where we saw true leadership, because real leaders show up when it matters most. And you saw President Trump there, boots on the ground, with relief, with help, to make sure that the people in East Palestine were actually heard, listened to, and actually bought supplies for them. But yet then the media wants to shift away from something that was very positive uh, with President Trump going there and say, oh, no, this whole thing is actually President Trump's fault, which is a complete lie. And it's just it's awful to me to the extent that they will go to and the lengths to be able to try to shift the story, lie about it, uh, proffer false facts, anything they can do to try to destroy this president and chip away at the actual accomplishments and his actions, which, which speak far louder than uh, President Biden spending President's Day in Ukraine. It's like America first versus America last. And also, I noticed uh, that President Trump didn't need to wear a fancy vest or eyeglasses, neither did anybody else on his tour. So I guess, you know, he, he didn't care enough to wear the vest, maybe. I don't know. Uh, anyway, Kim, I want to talk to you about our friend John the Mover, as I'm calling him. Move over, Joe yes. the Plumber. Move in, John the Mover <laughs> uh, from Blue Line Moving. Our friend John Rourke, the CEO of Blue Line Moving. I, I remember when he told me that he was moving you and Don Jr. down to Florida. And of course, he told me I couldn't tell anybody. Uh, but it was great right. to see him get a shout we'll out from President yeah, Trump yesterday. <laughs> uh, he also delivered 13 pallets of drinking water. But he posted this picture on social media. I wanted to put it up here because I thought this kind of encapsulates what was going on in East Palestine. And it says, PLM, East Palestine Lives Matter. And, you know, these people just want some acknowledgement that they do matter. And they got that from President Trump. And that seems so foreign to Joe Biden. It's absolutely true. And it's just, you know, to see their faces and you can just tell that their hearts were full to know that actually someone cared about them, about their families, about their children and bringing relief. And yes, John Rourke did a phenomenal job. He stepped up just like he's done to clean up at the border. Just like he said, first thing he's going to do is get his guys and great team and load up these tractor trailers and bring them there. So 
That's what real Americans are who put America first, living, working hard for their American dream, but giving back, which I think is so incredibly important. And as you see, President Trump acknowledged him and the hard work of everybody that uh, made it possible. But that's the, what's great about America. And I yeah. do want to focus on that, which is this is what's positive about exactly. in a time of need. We step up. We help those in our country. We also help people outside of our country. But we know when it's the right thing to do. Most things in life, it's obvious what's the right thing to do. It was obvious that the right thing to do was to bring help, okay, to the mm -hmm. people of East Palestine, to actually do something about it. And also, how about study it, make sure so it doesn't happen again. Yet you had Pete Buttigieg cowering in the corner, and until he was shamed and embarrassed by President Trump, he then decides to show up because yeah. he's not even doing the job that it's he's seven in the paid morning. to do you know, he by shows the up, American people. He tries to show up before everybody's out of bed in the morning and sneak out of town. Now, I also got to talk to you about McDonald's, uh, President Trump's favorite restaurant. I love this part of it. Um, here he is so talking about that uh, little trip to McDonald's real quick. Hello, everybody. That's a nice, beautiful looking group of people. So I know this menu better than you do. Okay? I probably know it better than anybody in here. All right. So apparently it's not unheard of. And you, you confirm this. He'll just pull over and go to McDonald's maybe when he's out and about. What does he order? Is he a regular guy? Does he go with a Big Mac every time, maybe a quarter pounder with cheese? Or does he switch it up? Maybe go with a spicy chicken sandwich every now and again? OK, well, you know, you have a true friend when um they share their McDonald's with you and you make it a whole thing. But he actually really does eat McDonald's. He loves McDonald's. He loves Pizza Hut. So at McDonald's, his go-tos, he'll get a bunch of things. And then we like he likes everyone to try them all. He likes the fish sandwich, the chicken sandwich. He likes the Big Mac. Uh, so what can I tell you? He, he loves it all, the quarter pounder. So we have all that array. And then, of course, the fries. Um, but, you know, we when we travel on the road, wherever we go, we actually then have the McDonald's and we're all eating on the plane. It's hysterical. So it's him. It's the whole team. Um, it's some of his biggest donors. And it's just it's fun because he's really authentic. You yeah, know, he's it's... one of the guys like he loves McDonald's. OK, he loves the Pizza Hut, the whole thing. And when we went to the Kentucky Derby um, this past year, it was so fun because I said, you've been so good. And we went and met with all these people. I'm going to reward you today on the plane. <laughs> we're going to have Kentucky yes. fried chicken. Yes. Yes, there needs to be okay, maybe like a, it's amazing. a Trump tasting menu at all these fast food restaurants so we know I we, think we can so. go in there, I'll you take the Trump tasting menu. You get the value meal? Yeah, <laughs> you can get like the value meal yes. and so you get all have the, you know, the number three.